Right, today's plan, this is the new Eaton board, which is gonna go in to power the kitchen upstairs. Now I wasn't originally planning, I wasn't planning on fitting a new board. I was just gonna add the circuits to the existing board. But the more I've been thinking about it, the more I think this is just a better, better way of doing it. It's just makes more sense. Well, that's what we've got to play with. You've got your main incomer, and then you've got your slots for your, your breakers. That's our main switch. So that's the main switch, just a 250 amp. Big hoofing switch. Now I'm not a fucking expert, but that looks very much to me like that done fucking fit. Ah, oh, for mother Christ. Son of a fucking diddly. Right, this is now the following day. So the footage which you saw me starting to record just out there in that classroom, uh, you saw me trying to fit the isolator switch into the fuse board and sod's law, it was the wrong one. So I've now ordered the right isolator that isn't here yet. And when that happened, I was like, fuck filming, I can't be bothered. I really have not got the patience. So it's a fresh day on a fresh head. So I shall show you what I did yesterday when the camera was off. So that was the board which you saw me trying to bolt the isolator into, which wouldn't get, wasn't going to fit. It was the, I don't know why it was the wrong one. I ordered it and it just wasn't, I don't know. Anyway, I wanted to fit this board up there. But then I got, when I unboxed it, I realised how bloody big it was. Because I was expecting a six-way, a three-phase six-way board. I was expecting something like this, just a little, just a little board, nothing huge. And this honking great thing turned up. So I had to, I've had to put it down this end of the switch room because there's just no, there's no other room anywhere. I've got to put a piece of trunking under here now, cut a piece of Paxlin in. And this here is going to be the cabinet for all the contactors. In fact, you can just see them in there. I put five in, but I ran out of din rail. So that'll be the contactors. Um, these are what come from upstairs. They'll go into the contactors, which I'm going to finish off later. But the first thing which I want to do is get this piece of trunking in. So let me get set up and I'll see you in a sec. Okay, top tip, all right. When you're using angle grinders and you're cutting metal, okay, if you're in a, you know, building like this, make sure, because it's easy done. I've done it many a time, all right? Do the old, put a latex glove over the smoke alarm, all right? Because otherwise you'll send the whole building into an alarm. So yeah, get a latex glove or something and just put it over. You can put the panel, you can disable this zone, but it's just easier to put a latex glove over it, do your cut, open the windows for five minutes and then you're all right again. Right, let me cut this, because I've actually measured that. Let me cut this and I'll see you in there in a sec. You can buy this stuff. I just use it when you when you've finished your cut and you put a bit of cold gal spray on it. I use ZG90 this stuff, but you can buy most wholesalers have got this um, and you can just pick it up off the shelf. I think this one's quite a premium one. It is good, but if you're in a pinch, um, Screwfix, Tool Station, all the usual wholesalers, and you can buy it for not this exact one, but you can buy them most cold galf sprays. You can buy them for like a five or a can. So they're not expensive, but it is good once you've finished doing your cuts, especially if it's outside, just give it a little spray with this. It doesn't have to be loads, it's just. Oh, that makes you high. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we've got this piece of Paxlin. Now, you've seen me fit this in a board previously. Paxlin is one of those things that not all electricians use it anymore. In fact, I'll show you. Paxlin is, it's like a, it's basically a non-conductive composite material. And it is very good as an insulator between boards and trunking. In fact, no, these boards haven't got it. No, they haven't fitted it here. Cause like what some of them do, they'll just cut a hole in the trunking cut a hole in this slot here and I'll just put a rubber strip around it. I mean, you can do that way, but I had a piece of Paxlin already, so it just made sense to fit it. All right, so what we've done, that's our template there. So I pull that back and I've just marked around it, the drill holes and stuff. So I'm just gonna cut it out with the jig now and I'll be back in a sec. So 
So I've cut my piece of Paxlin out. <laughs> I've tried to cut the slot in the middle. So I've got to cut a hole there, a hole there, and then I use a jigsaw to join the holes up to make one big slot. That was a brand new flat spade bit. And it just, Paxlin, I said this in my last video, it's so hard to cut. It just eats, it eats bits. I was gonna throw that away now. It's just, it's completely blunted it. So what I'm gonna do, I will just drill a 10 mil hole and I'll just do another one here. And I'll just have to cut it out with the jigsaw that way. It's gonna take me a bit longer, but Paxlin is really it's very unforgiving on bits. Once you've done a cut, you might as well throw the bit away. Okay, so I've cut my slot out in the Paxlin now, which you can see, and I'm just holding, I've just butted the trunking up underneath. Now, if you're an apprentice and you've been tasked with doing this, you've got to remember that the trunking, you've got to cut the hole in the trunking out bigger than the Paxlin. So all I'm gonna do is just take a marker pen and I'm just gonna cut a hole out. I'm just gonna mark my hole out. It's not an exact science. So that's my slot there, okay? So that's our template. So that goes to one side now, and then all we've got to do is we've got to cut this out a little bit bigger than that hole there. So I now need some drill bits. I'm gonna go and get my uh, cutters out of the van, two seconds. This job here, right? I didn't price, I mean, I I, in all honesty, I fucked up the price on this big time. I just underpriced it badly. But this Paxilin, right? I haven't quoted none of it. In fact, I'll show you this here, cutting out this slots, this trunking, and then these boards here. None of this was in my price. I didn't price for any of this, but that's my own fault because I just, I under, I just, I eyeballed it too low for so I don't know why just I, I I balled it wrong and it does happen and it's why I think one of the reasons why I talk about pricing on here is because it's so important I think to try to especially for younger people to get them to when you go to jobs about pricing things to look out for because originally I was going to take all of the supplies off this board the board could take it or so I initially thought but then I looked a little bit closer and I was like you could do it off that board and it would take it because it's got a 250 amp main switch so it is possible but the more I started thinking about it, the more I thought, well, actually, I don't really want to take the kitchen off this board because if they've got to shut down the kitchen, you have to shut, you could just turn all the breakers off, but it would be easier if you had your own separate board, which is what I should have priced for originally. But this is just one of those things when you, you eyeball it wrong. So I ended up buying this board. I priced for this, but I didn't price to fit this board or the trunking. Now that board was 150 quid for the board. The breaker, the main switch, the 200 amp main switch was another 200 quid. Well, when you think the job, the total price of the job is about five grand, and that's half a grand, just like that gone on something I didn't expect, which is that's why I talk, say that when I do, when I do price stuff, I normally just do it on day rate because it's just I can give an estimate, but it's very seldom I give fixed quotes, and I gave a fixed quote here, which I shouldn't have done. I should have just given an estimate, but that's my own fault. But it's one of the reasons I like talking about this because it's. Some electricians are so, you know, they're so, you know, thing about talking about pricing, like it's some sort of mystical fucking dark art. You know, I fucked up the price on this. I mean, we'll still have made profit, but we won't have made anywhere near as much as I was, you know, we won't have made as much as I was expecting to make. But yeah, it's just live and learn, isn't it? There was, actually, I don't think the video has come out yet. There was a video where I was talking about this, but I don't think I've actually released that video yet. So it depends what order I've done, the, I don't know. Um, but it's one of these power inverters and it's good. It's 1500, it's a one and a half kilowatt inverter, but it is good. I like it. I'm still, I'm going to do like a running review on this because I keep this on the back of the van now full time. So you'll, you'll see me talking about it in a couple of videos. I'm just going to, at the moment, I quite like it, but we'll see what happens. Um, so it's just more of a running review, but it is good so far. Quite like it. You can buy this stuff, this protective strip. I'm actually just using it. This is this will go underneath the boards and this is where all the cables will go into. You'll see why in a second. So I've just cut a 64 mil hole there and just put this to protect the cables when they come in. But you can buy this stuff and you can buy it in lots of different sizes. This is 1.6 mil I think. And you buy like a 10 meter thing of it for a tenner. 
So it's like, just keep it on the van. But you can buy like lots of different sizes. I've got three or four on the van for different thicknesses of metal. But keep that on the van. Properly good stuff. You buy it on eBay, Amazon. It's cheap as chips. A few inches later. Right, so that is our trunking in. So that's our Paxilin in now. Trunking's in. In this side, I've cut, that's the 64 mil hole. And that's basically all of these cables are gonna go down through that hole. And then the incomer, the three phase and neutral tails are gonna come through this, through this trunking. And I've cut another 64 mil hole in the end of this lid here. So they'll just come straight into here, up and straight into the bottom of the isolator. So that's now done. I was gonna, the reason I've cut a hole in the top of the trunking is because I'm not, I don't wanna take this piece of trunking out to put a set in or anything because it means I'm gonna to have to take all of these armors out and I'm not getting into that. So I've just cut a hole, bit of edging strip, job done. Right, I need a coffee because I'm flagging. I'll be back in a bit. Right, do you remember on the last, I did a video, I can't remember which last one or the one before, and I was talking about the potential on the, this earth bar. I remember I said I was getting four and a half amps and we're getting just under four amps, well, four amps is what we're getting on this bar today. I told the school about it and they just want me to try to track down roughly where that leakage is coming from. But one thing that's really important, right? Don't ever, ever take off. And it's really tempting. All right, we've all been there and done it, all right? But really don't do it. And this is the exact reason why. Because at the moment, if I put my clamp meter on there, we're getting four amps flowing through that earth. So there's four amps worth of leakage somewhere and it's flowing down to earth. But currently, if I take off that nut and I pull that main bond off, if I was to touch, put one hand on that bar and the other hand on that earth cable, I mean, that's four amps. I mean, that's enough to stop your heart ten, tenfold. That's a, a nasty leak. And also, because that's on the earth bar, there's no RCD protection. There's nothing. So there's no, you know, nothing will trip if that happens because it is, it is flowing through to earth. So although it's tempting, especially if you're doing ZE readings and stuff, oh, if I can just quick just disconnect it, don't ever, it's a very tempting, but don't ever fucking do it because that exact reason. It looks, you'd think, oh, it's safe, it's earth. It isn't. I mean, it's currently doing its job. It's, it's flowing down to earth. But the second you take that nut off, you hold that bar, I mean, that, would, you, that will kill you dead. So as tempting as it looks sometimes, especially if you're in a hurry, don't ever do it because it's, if you're gonna start removing these, you've gotta make sure the power is off. I think the leakage is coming from this board here because um, we've actually got service bond, we've got nothing. We are just over two amps of leakage on this board. And for some reason on the water bond, we've got about two amps of leakage. Gas bond, we haven't got anything. Building bond, we haven't got anything. Between that board and the water bond, I'm not sure why. So that's what I've gotta do now, but I just thought that was a really worthwhile thing to mention. Don't ever take these off unless the power's off. 20 minutes later. All right, so I'm just wrapping up at the end of the day. I, had to, I couldn't get much camera work here because it's a bit awkward to film here, but basically this is the little cabinet I was on about and those are all the contactors which are now in. So what I've done, these are all the, um, those are all the feeds which go up to the hobs and ovens and stuff, right? I've left the earth disconnected for the second because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a floating earth bar in there and the same again down here and then I'll just link them together. I've left space here on the end because there's got to, I've gotta put another contactor here on the end which is gonna be, it's gonna be the interface contactor for the Paxton system. So when they swipe the Paxton card upstairs, it'll just energize that contactor which will then energize all of these ones. So it's like a main contactor for all the subcontactors, if that makes any sense. Oh, by the way, there's this thing going around that I'm saying the word contactor wrong. Um, contactor, contactor, contact, I don't fucking care. Do you, <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I think what happens is because like somebody in the comments writes, you're saying the word contactor wrong and they spell it in like capital letters. Uh, they'll say that they'll spell the word contactor out like you're a fucking baby or something. They'll put C-O-N, con, dash, T-A-C, da, really, I don't think it matters, okay? Oh, router, that's, I call it a router, but a router, who cares, you know what I mean? I've got a load of RCBOs which haven't turned up yet. This is a C10, this is gonna do all the, swi the switches, this is just the trigger. I've got a load of RCBOs turning up, uh, B, are they 25s or 32s? 25s, I think they were. Um, so I've got a load of those turning up, and those are just gonna be, will run feeds from here, I'll just do it in singles or something because I don't need to do it in sheathed cabling. So I'll just run the feeds from here 
to the feed to each one of these contactors, you'll have eight RCBOs and they'll feed out to the contactors, or whatever it's called. So that's the plan. All right, give us a minute, let me pack up, see you in a sec. Right, before I go, they've asked me to price for, I've actually already priced it, but it's interesting to keep doing these and everybody gets an idea of what jobs are worth and whether, you know, whether I've underpriced it or overpriced it or whatever. So I think it's just good just to bat these ideas around. So one of the jobs that they want doing in here, these are the old fluorescent fittings. They're 1200 by 300. Now we've got to replace these four in here. They're just standard ones. These ones aren't dimmable. So those four have got to be replaced. Then out here, the light's not very good out here, I'm afraid. They've put this stud wall in, this partition. And basically that PIR sensor has to move back over here. So it senses that here like it should. We've got to put a PIR, in fact, right behind you as an emergency lighting box. We've got to put one of those lighting boxes here on this wall, and we've got to put another one on this side, so one either side. Here we've got to put, we've got Paxton readers on all these doors. A Paxton power supply has got to go above this door. There is power, there's probably a Paxton cable somewhere up here we can nick the supply off. Then in this room, we've got eight light fittings, again, 1200 by 300. We've got to take these down and put the LED 40 watt retrofits in. So these have all got to come down, LEDs have got to go in, but we've got to fit 10 in. We've basically got to take the outer fittings, move them across and shoehorn an extra fitting in between. So there's, there is a bit of fucking about wiring there to do because you've got to take these ones, move them back a little bit. And I don't know if the wires are going to be long enough. So. We've got eight fittings, we've got to put 10 in, but we've got to try and shoehorn the extra fitting in. What else have we got in this room? I've put one fitting up, so that fitting's already up, but that's what I'm on about. We've got to fit three, but one of these is an emergency fitting. So four of those fittings, and we've got, they're operated by a PIR in this room, that little sensor up there. We've got a trunk to a double dim and switch here. So they still come on with the PIR, but then we can dim them. So you need four dimmable fittings and one has to be an emergency. Out here, you've got one, two, three, four, five of these fittings to replace again, LED fittings. Two of them are emergency packs. And I think that was it. These are the Paxton power supplies, these things. Really interesting. If you start to learn how to use it, it's properly cool stuff. So I'm actually going on a training course shortly to learn how to do it. But these are the Paxton units that have got to go above those doors. I'd say there's a good week's work here to do all of that because these light fittings, you're going to have to put a bush and coupler and drill it into the into the trunking so it's not just a quick you know bish bash bosh drop it put a fresh one up there's a lot of fucking about to get these fittings onto that trunking you've got to drill a 20 mil hole twice bush coupler lock ring to get it to to get them to sit on the trunking so there is a bit of fucking about i allowed about a week i think it's probably five days work somewhere around there to do the Paxton, change all these fittings over, shoehorn the extra fittings in there. Um, but leave your prices below and just leave, oh, same again, prices, your thoughts, because I think it helps out everybody if people start talking about it and getting a bit interactive about it. I think it really helps so many people because electricians, I said this earlier in the video, they're, they're like this when it comes to pricing. No one ever wants to talk about it. So leave all your thoughts below. Um, otherwise, that's about it. We'll go see you in a week's time. Uh, if I'm really good, I'll try and get a Friday video. In fact, there is. There is a Friday video coming out this week. So uh, you'll see you then, and then we'll see you on the following Monday. Take care.